Hello. Wow. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to the release party. So, I got a couple of guests with me today. Um, and um, hopefully, there's a couple of people sending in questions um, that we want to answer during the show because this is live. Um, so, everybody smile. You're on TV. Um, and um, with me, I have Susanne Moog or Susie. Um, Hello. Say hi to the world. Hello, world. <laughs> Can you explain a bit what your main focus I'm, points were, what yeah. you do? I'm, I'm Susie and I'm um, contributing to the Typo 3 core and uh, I was uh, busy the last few days with bug fixes and features for the shiny new LTS version we have now. So That's that. That's okay. that. To the left of me is Benji Cott. Um, say hi. Hello <laughs> everyone. So I know, I know I need also to explain what I'm doing here, yeah, right? Okay, that's a live situation, so people. people are waiting for it. Okay, I'm, I'm mainly responsible for UX and the Tapas Free backend. Um, done a lot of stuff there. Uh, also responsible for the introduction package. Um, we just released this morning with a lot of help of Suzy again. So Suzy's everywhere, basically. Yeah. Um, that's true. <laughs> also responsible for the bootstrap package and getting all the stuff together and keep it running yeah awesome so um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a quick demo uh, uh, slide thing um, and afterwards we want to jump into QA but it's the three of us in our trusty brick wall place but we have one more guy sitting around um, in our traveling reporter kit so traveling from places to places and hopefully he's available right now. So we'll try to switch over to him. Let's see if that works. Ah, there ah, he is. Thank you, Matthias. Hi, and good evening, Type 3 community. My name is Jörg, coming live to you from Bangkok. We have a wonderful evening planned for you. And if you should have any questions during the demonstration and during the presentation of Typo 3 V9's new features, just give us a question via Twitter under the hashtag 9LTSQA. Thank you. Back to the studio. So that's that. We'll, we'll see where Jörg will continue to travel uh, during the night. So. Um, I'd say we'll jump right into our short little presentation and let's hit it off. I got my trusty click thing. Now let's <laughs> see if the computer works. Is it? Here we go. So I should still be on audio. So if uh, we do a little number crunching first. So basically since the last LTS version the team has released, we had 266 contributors who made 3,279 commits in total. Who's good at math? In 545 days. I know the slides, I could give you that. <laughs> <laughs> so that basically means we had six commits per day. Um, so if we take a look at other projects, um, I think we're in a pretty good spot. Um, we compiled a little bit more in terms of numbers. so. Uh, we do know that we touched about 11,000 files in total. Boy, that's a lot. Um, we added roughly 500,000 lines of code, um, which is good. But we removed 360,000 lines of code, which is better. Um, and for those really good at math who did this all uh, from, the, from the top of their head, this basically means that we have 138,000 lines of better code in the core right now. Yeah, but that number is, I guess, already outdated. Yeah, there were some changes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's so it's more or less. It's, it's probably more. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we'll see about that. All right. So um, let's talk a bit about what new things we got in the uh, LTS version. So. First off, there's site management, which is supposed to be that new 
central thing where everything regarding to sites takes place. Um, so if we take a look at that, this is the sites module, basically, right? In the back end. Uh, you can smile and nobody sees you. That's, that's on screen. <laughs> um, so what we can see in this example is that we have one site called introduction. I guess that's from the introduction package. That's actually the release screenshots. So um, we just reused them here to um, demonstrate what we achieved in that area. Yeah. All right, perfect. And we can see right here that it runs in English, in German, and in Danish. And Danish is disabled right yeah. now. So because so, translation is not finished yet, so I know, the editor is already able to translate the pages, but it's not shown in the front end. But right. we can dig into that a bit but later. But it's important that nobody forgot about yeah, that use sure. case, right? Um, and uh, we can see we have like uh, a standard URL, and then we use language segments, so or yeah. URL prefixes. That is right. Okay, cool. Um, so this thing has been. I demoed that on the YouTube channel a while back, and this has been rearranged to be easier to use, correct? That's and we added some descriptions to make it easier to understand what's happening there and to make it look nicer. All right. Since, since my last demo, there's variance for entry points. Can anyone explain a bit what that does? Yeah, I mean, you can see there that you have uh, demo.typo3.org as your main entry point, but maybe you have a dev domain. I hope you have a dev domain because you don't want to do anything live. Now we do everything in life. Yeah, okay, you do everything live, but maybe others have some uh, staging or dev systems. And with variants for the entry point, you can add these dev systems, depending on the application context, to the configuration. So this makes it totally easy. And you have just one place where you can configure all URLs and you don't have that sysdomain thingy where you need to disable some domains and then enable them again when you deploy and when you merge the database back you have to disable them again so okay we got so, rid we, of that. So, so we never launch development domains to life yeah. anymore okay that that completely makes sense um what else do we have so this is the language section correct everything regarding two languages so locales that's just been moved around so that it's you can see more and scroll less that makes sense is that yeah the visible in front end that's the the biggest change i guess yeah <clears throat> well basically yes um i think that's came afterwards i'm not quite sure when we added it before your demo or after but the use case we, we i just got into was um, basically, it was for now really hard to make a new translation of a website that's not finished yet, but you, you need to have all configurations ready available. Yeah? And with this change, we are um, allowing the editors to work on the translations and can then can decide in the site configuration when we want to make the translation available to the public when we are finished, basically, in most cases. Yeah. <clears throat> So this basically becomes part of the deployment process, correct? So the site, yeah. the site definition would be part of a Git branch for that given language. Yeah. Um, oh, that's smart. <laughs> um, next up, we got the error handling, which is amazing because uh, up until now, you could only define a, one central error handler for the entire type of the installation. And that was a huge problem because um, you could have multiple sites with different 404 pages or different error handling and your, your custom PHP error handler got filled up with uh, if constructs or if you were smart switch cases, um, which is equally worse, um, equally worse, equally bad. Um, so these error handlers now run on a per site level. So I can, I can register any HTTP error code my extension might return and then I have a couple of ways to, to handle those errors. Yeah. So, for example, what we see in the example is that we, um, that we have on the right-hand side the how to handle errors part. Um, so we show content from another page. And a lot of people confuse that with the, with the solution that Type 3 offered before, which was a redirect, correct? Yeah, but this isn't a redirect. This uh, behind the scenes, this actually fetches the content from that page and shows it as a separate one. 
So you really get a 404 response. You don't have a redirect. You just show the content. And maybe the biggest improvement with that is that you have multi-language for four pages out of the box. So oh yeah, right. This this is uh, the thing people I talked to liked most about it because that was a hassle before. Yeah. Um, the the other big advantage um, over a redirect is that we now keep the original URL, yeah. right? Yeah. And this is like a huge plus because we we got reports from people using Type of Three installs that were complaining that I don't know, like ten percent of their hits are onto the four or four page that they created and then redirected to, and they missed the original. Uh, URL that was yeah. requested, which then led to the 404. Um, so I think that's a huge plus. Yeah, the other big watch we can now have is that we also can show the translate content of the page. Because yeah. we, we, we even if you hit a 404 page, we still can, um, we see can determine, you, the language, determine the language right? you are trying to access and deliver the right translation for that 404 page. That yeah, means multilingual um, for four pages or uh, access restricted pages is not a big deal anymore. You can just go into the site module, configure the error handling and done. And then yeah. just keep your normal workflow and translate your content. Yeah, that makes sense. So next up we have the static routes. That's or st static routes. That's that's completely new and if if I understand that correctly and I have to admit that I was busy with other stuff um, and I unfortunately wasn't able to follow the development of those late stages, but I can now have a robots.txt file per site. Did yeah. I get that right? Yeah, that was the, the main use case for that feature. This is what we see here. You want a robots.txt on root level, but you might have multiple sites, so there can only be one robots.txt in your document root. This is a problem. Or so a fav icon. Or a fav icon. So uh, what we did here is uh, we just added a simple interface for adding static text for the robots.txt in this case, where you can directly put in the text that is also stored in the site configuration, which can be deployed. And um, you have additional options. Instead of static text, you can also show content from another page or an external page or any file you have in the file admin. So you could actually have multiple robots.txt files and include them there. Virtual files. Virtual files, and, basically. Right, this is, it, yeah. I, I, mean, I mean, it's late enough. I don't know if I can swear about on this channel, but this is fucking amazing. Um, okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, you already talked about that, and I don't know if people um, watching the stream uh, know that, but um, this is all stored in a fixed YAML file format, even though we have the backend view with um, IRRE relations and we can use all that, but it's stored to a file, not to the database. Yeah. Okay. So um, if we talk a bit about an outlook, what the sites module could become in the future, because the overall goals and ideas are not necessarily the goals, but the ideas are there to bundle site package or template selection there as well? Yeah, but then we, make, we, make, we are make, still in progress. Hold, yeah. hold, hold, hold your horses. Um, just as a, as a quick, um, as a quick uh, disclaimer, yeah. uh, this is idea stage, right? Yeah, this is still <laughs> idea stage and we, so. we, we didn't figure out ex until now where we really want to head. But with the site configuration, um, we solved a problem we long had on Type of 3 and that we didn't know where the exact configuration for a specific site may be a theme or may be just color selectors or whatever you need for a site. Maybe loaded extensions, content elements, all that stuff. You basically to, to provide that full package. It must be stored somewhere. Correct. Yeah. And we currently now have to currently still have a situation that's stored across the system. It's working fine, it's, it's working without errors, but we could improve in that area. And this is where we, we're thinking about, okay, we, we maybe can do better by providing a, a new interface around that, that combines all that information stored per entry point into your site. Okay, so we also no longer need the database-based 
TypeScript templates, etc. Which uh, is hopefully in the future at some point. <laughs> this uh, is an outlook. <laughs> Later. This is this is an outlook. Anything goes. Yeah, this is it's just an outlook. But we, we are we are actively thinking about it. But that means, again means a lot of work, um, and we need to prioritize where we put our resources to, and we see okay when uh, that's the enemy we want to tackle. And I'm actually dreaming about the more technical part of that. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> How could it be anything else? I mean, the site configuration is, is uh, one of the places where we can store context-independent configuration that is uh, still related to a specific site. We had the situation that we put into TypeScript a lot of settings uh, that are basically for one site, but also for the backend or the CLI context. For example, you have an importer and that stores records somewhere. You have now the PID in the TypeScript. So what you do is you go and uh, run the front end in your importer CLI script, which is bad and ugly and needs so to pass TypeScript. So, so what you're talking about is that if, if you want to import things and you need to access uh, page IDs, etc., that you fire up a full-blown yeah. front end request, even though you're on command. Line. Yeah. yeah, that makes little sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm I'm dreaming of a day. <laughs> <laughs> where, where I have all that in, in my site con configuration and never need to use uh, the TypeScript front-end controller in anything other than the front-end. Fair enough. So okay, that, 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 this, completely, that's my dream. that completely makes sense. Yeah, we can do a lot with that, I guess. I mean, with the, the, that we now have that information and that it's not necessarily a web server or even a database server involved. We have a lot of meta information. Um, and with things like, like, like DDEF coming up, um, where you would just git branch and and describe your your server environment um, underneath. So I, like I need my, some MySQL database, MariaDB or Procona or whatever. Um, my favorite web server, Nginx, of course, or Apache, if you like. Um, you need you need like 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 PHP and stuff. Um, and now we also provide the the configuration of a typo three site also. Um, in a very deterministic way, which can then be git branched, and we, you do git branch and you push to some remote repo and DDEF fires it up in production um, or in development or staging or whatever, that's where the root variants kick in, uh, which is uh, incredibly helpful. Yeah, that's... Ah, and another thing, you can n use n variables in the site configuration. So maybe that's... Oh, neat. So you get the best of both worlds, yep. basically. Yeah. So okay. we ca can use them in uh, all the configuration for the environment, not just in the entry point, but in every, like the language things. That means also. if we take the base URL entry point, for example, in that case, if, if we now take also DDEF, um, I could just add new end variables with the DDEF yep. um, entry points and then just put the end bars into my configuration. And during deployment, it actually knows, okay, the new end files kicks in and the production worlds are, are really running. So I don't have need any workarounds, any hacks. It just works fine, right? Yeah. Cool. That's pretty cool. Neat. So <coughs> um, my little voice on my ear told me that we got two questions already. So um, we will send over to Jörg, um, who knows about those. Let's see. I don't know where he is at yet. He used to be. Welcome back, Type of 3 community. I'm in uh, Washington, D.C., actually. Quite a quick flight, but uh, still a little bit, uh, well, hungover and a little bit jet lagged. But yeah, actually, we had a question on Twitter um, by Sebastian McHalsen. Where does the Type of 3 team take its well deserved holiday before kicking off the next break through versions? All right, so basically, where, where do we go on holiday before we start with version 10? So we'll start with Susie. What, what's a holiday? Interesting. That would have been my question as well. Um, <laughs> can, can, can somebody explain the word? No, I, I don't know yet. I'm, I'm still in the release flash mode and uh, I probably need... And you haven't slept in like 36 hours. Yeah. Well, you see that. <laughs> <A bit>. Arguably. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so 
so, so I really don't know. I, I think at the beginning of November, I'll finally take a week off. So stay tuned. Interesting. Benji, what about you? I got vacation next week, actually. So, uh, and What's we are doing it in France because we are traveling on Friday to our beloved friends in France, uh, the two tapestry camp north. And after that, I will be for three days with my girlfriend in Disneyland. So, what a death does. <laughs> Disneyland. Okay, <laughs> that, 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 that Disneyland. definitely makes sense. Um, as for me, uh, I'm going to be in France at the type of three camp Nantes, uh, which will be the, the, the first bit of the holiday. And uh, I fly back on Sunday afternoon um, and continue to work. Vacation ends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, but, but I have to admit that the, that, that the type of three camp in France is amazing. The people are awesome, um, super friendly, um, super motivated to do stuff um, and uh, just I don't know if anyone from France is watching this or anyone who will be in, in, in Nantes. <laughs> um, this uh, will be my thing. So, um, yeah, do we have anything else? Yes, we do actually, Matthias. I have another question by Sebastian Michalsen, but before we get to that, we're going to go to a question by Spooner or Later, our good friend Thomas Loeffler. What is your second favorite feature in version 9? <laughs> Susie, what, 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 what's your second favorite feature in version 9? My second favorite feature is probably what we just talked about, side handling. Interesting. Benji? I'm not allowed to talk about it yet. And no spoilers, right? No spoilers. Ah, damn it. But it probably has something to do with also the French people again, but we will get into that later. <laughs> Um, I would, I would, I would, I mean, Spooner, hold, hold that thought. Um, there will be spoilers, um, if I would answer that right now. Um, but if we show off the, 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 the features as we go over tonight, um, I will definitely get back to that, um, and answer what my personal second favorite feature is. Um, okay, cool. Jörg, anything else? Yeah, actually, we have another question by Sebastian Michelson, as I teased on uh, before. The question is, Type 3 does a great job at adopting PSR standards recently. Are there PSR specs on your radar that you want to adopt in the future? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. It's a serious front topic. Guy. Um, front <laughs> front guy. Sorry, front, I'm front, totally front out here. <laughs> just, just, just looking confused. Um. Um, well, I mean, I mean, but but there, there's more to that. I do know that there's a a caching PSR or cache implementation PSR. I don't know the numbers six or sixteen or sixty six. I, I, I don't remember or I don't know. Um, and we actually we actually thought um, or, or we considered that like very very seriously to uh, implement that unfortunately that standard sucks um, so it's it's maybe it's, we rephrase that <laughs> okay, yeah it's not yet suiting our demands so that, that's that's what I tried to say um, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, no the it's it's it, it's not necessarily that it's that, that it's bad per se but the 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 caching uh, mechanisms dis defined in that standard um, don't even catch up to what Type of 3 can do right now. So, in terms for our users, is it would mo most likely be a, like a step back. Um, that's. I, I wouldn't say that. There's the simple caching one, and there's the more, uh, for for lack of better word, I don't think advanced. it's called complicated, but <laughs> advanced maybe uh, better one. Bet better caching. They're better caching. Better caching extended plus. <laughs> <laughs> there were even um, pending patches uh, for that, I think. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd have to look it up again, to be honest, because I, I didn't have that on my radar for the last few weeks. But when talking about PSR, I think it's important to mention that there's one PSR currently in, in the drafting phase, I think, about um, something that might replace hooks and signals in the future. That's one we are looking closely at and where our beloved leader Benny Muck is also he's uh, actually driving that involved yeah. in and 
discussing that and and spending <laughs> the little time he has left besides Typo Three to bring that one forward. So I'm Fair looking enough. forward to that one. Yep. All right. So um, I'd say we'll uh, continue uh, with the presentation um, just to walk through that because I do know that there's people sitting at the release parties and uh, there's most likely drinks involved. Um, so we don't want to spare you with that stuff. Um, all right. So moving on, we have page-based URL handling. Woohoo! Wee. Um, Ta-da! <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> um, so basically what we're talking about is that uh, page records have a new field called URL segment um, and all links use this field or, or the information stored in that field um, if, if, if it has a value. And, and all links means front-end, back-end, command line. Basically, we now have a very deterministic way of, uh, of, of, of using that. Um, languages are automatically taken into account. So no longer does your, I don't know, Danish website run English-speaking URLs. Um, there's no longer the need for third-party extensions in order to work with that. And that's basically uh, the field we added. And I don't think it quite does the change justice. I mean, the, the change is so huge. Um, most likely, I mean, a lot of people approached me, uh, me personally, and going like, what's the problem? Everybody has that. Well, no. <laughs> um, then I, I mean, Symphony got uh, localizable routes in 4.2, like a couple of months ago. I don't Two know. Two months like that. Uh, yeah. Is, is, is something something like that, and and it's not it's not just some some small part. It's um, it's 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 gigantic. We needed to remove pages language overlay. Um, so that we can actually store the proper path at the proper place, which is the page. Um, we, we had to basically, well, re rebuild the entire front end stack because that was, that was code which dated back to uh, commit one, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Um, and still ran on PHP 7, by the way, I might add. <laughs> um, so that's, uh, that was like a huge thing. Um, and uh, if we take a look at the field in context, we can see it in the in, in the middle of the screen. So um, that that URL segment, the slug, is being auto generated if I push the little re refresh button at the right hand side. Correct? Yeah. Even if you don't, if you create a new page or something. That then is being created the automatically. That's the yeah, regeneration e button. Exactly. So. But but I can move the page around. And, and the slug will remain the same. Yeah. That's important yeah. because it's it, it's a URL. Yeah. It's 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 and this is what a lot of people don't get. It's it's the full blown URL. And we also can see that we now know the the uh, the site base, correct? And this changes regarding to language. Yeah. And that's actually um, uh, that actually makes a lot of sense because now the editor can actually uh, navigate within a complex multi-site setup. Um, so this is actually pretty pretty cool. Um, so we also this also works in mass editing, right? So I can I can uh, mass edit a lot of um, a lot of pages and the URL segments. And if I still, if I move pages around, these remain the same. So I don't run into 404 errors, or my SEO ranking will will uh, will die out, right? Because the URL remains the same. Yep. Um, we initially wanted to build an auto redirects feature. That's still in the making, correct? This uh, wasn't finished for the LTS release, so it's not included. But yeah. It might come later. Yeah, that actually makes sense. There are route enhancers. That's when extension authors kick in, correct? Yeah, or page types, for example. So like for a page type, you would have 
something like .html at the end or .json or RSS feed or something like that. That's what we now call a page type enhancer. Okay. So you can configure that in your site configuration and map the page types to the ending. And uh, then there's things like plugin enhancers and then X-Base plugin enhancer out of the box for Typo3, which you can use to map your plugins to URLs. And if you have a totally complicated uh, use case that isn't built in to Typo3, you can just write your own enhancer and your own mappers. So basically one tip for that part is um, try to to start thinking about routing with the new documentation and uh, the new concepts in mind and not trying to map what you know from earlier versions like RealWorld or CoolUri to the new version because the concept is different, a lot different. So I mean, the, the, the extensions like, like Cool URI or, uh, or Real URL, the, the, their approach was you just throw a URL at them and the web server says, I don't know what to do. Um, and then the URL is passed on to Type 3 and Type 3 is going, I don't know what to do either. Hey, Real URL, do you know what to do? And then the Real URL started guessing what might be correct with all problems <laughs> next to that. So, 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 so a lot of things happening at runtime, um, as opposed to the current solution, which is very deterministic and, and straightforward and, 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 and hardened, right? It, 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 it sounds a lot more, a lot stronger to me. I mean, there's also dynamic parts in there. So, so the page routes are basically static for that page, but if you have like a plugin enhancer that takes uh, data from the database, or even if you have your own one taking data from some external service, you can't have that statically. So you have to be able to map dynamic parts, but still all the Un variants. Unless I come up with my own slug field in my own record, news uh, uh, record yeah. or whatever. Yeah. That, that that works if it's um, in type of three, but if it's something external or some yeah, yeah, ab dynamic absolutely, parameter, absolutely, yeah. it, it doesn't. So so what you have for a page is uh, basically a collection of routes with placeholders in it. So type of three then looks at the collection and looks at the placeholders and, and looks which URL route could be mapped with the parameters. So there's still a lookup involved, but it's if if you get the concept concept which took me a while then it's actually much easier to understand and much more deterministic to debug i i don't know who of the the viewers has ever had problems with real url and debugging <laughs> see, see see those here the, the gray yeah. ones the, the left three the, the, the one on the right was that, me that's real url debugging yeah so yeah. Bas basically, um, at, at least for me, that has gotten easier. So. Okay. So, um, my little voice tells me that we have quite a few questions. I don't know if you're copped onto the plane. Let's see where we are. Hi. Coming to you from Paris right now. It was a very, very short flight again. and. Still, I'm a little bit, uh, yeah, let's not talk about that. But yeah, we indeed have some more questions. Uh, one question that reached us uh, via Twitter by Torsten Griebenau. How about upgrading from Type 3 V8 to V9? Will it be a hard job? Standard depends. answer depends. <laughs> um, so for for um, for most things, there's upgrade wizards. So th it's the usual suspects. It's the extensions. Um, I think the. I mean, I, I do know our internal estimation for typo 3com um, which is about four days of work. Um, so that's not not what I consider overly hard. Um, it's a multilingual site with uh, 12 languages or something underneath the hood. Um, and I think that it, it, it's fair. So I didn't really, not, nothing that shook me. It's, it's, it, it's a hell of a lot easier than going from 4.5 to 6.2 and it's, it's a hell of a lot easier going 
uh, then going from 6.5 to 7. Um, so there's there's tools involved. Spoiler alert. Um, and uh, so I don't really think it's it's that hard. I doubt it. No. No. It, it, it's definitely easier than before. We did that. That's what we know for a fact. Um, and upgrading shouldn't be shouldn't be too tricky. And a thanks to the documentation team maybe oh, yeah. at this place because uh, the install and upgrade guide is already up to date. Neat. So. Yeah, Thanks so for that. Sh shout out for the, the, to them. So the next question is from Russia, and I have to apologize since the name is in Cyrillic, I am not able to pronounce it. So question from Russia. What about Cyrillic language in URLs? Cyrillic language in URLs. Everybody is looking at me. I yeah, have a feeling a like... The You're the developer. I can tell you what line. Benny told me. Because he told me that even Japanese is not a problem. That means also that Kyrillic is no problem. Yeah. That you also could do, if you would like, emojis in the URL. Yay! Yeah. But I don't know if that's a use case anywhere. Um, so I, I consider it, yes, doable, yep. no problem at all. Um, Please test. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we would be super helpful for, for, for tests in that regard. I have to admit that my Kyrillic is currently a bit non-existent. <laughs> um, but so is my Chinese and my Japanese and my Arabic and my Turkish. Yeah, but I way. know that Benny Mack actually uh, launched, we talked about at the Mexico, oh, yeah. um, is, um, is, what was it, DNB Audio? DNB. DNB Audio. Um, and it's a lot of Asian. Uh, languages involved and also the URLs were built for that project actually so big shout out again to Benny so awesome all right we consider it done <laughs> <laughs> Good. got one more thank you yeah we actually have another question from YouTube by Ernesto Bashni and the question is which feature or addition did not make it into v9 in time that you're most sad about? Which feature didn't make it into version 9 and made, made me sad that it didn't make it? Um, I think the language unbind and rebind functionality, which let you switch between free mode and connected mode um, in a very easy fashion. Because unfortunately, the patch was like 90% done. And then just other stuff got more important. That, that makes me cry myself to sleep <laughs> every night. That's very sad for you. I'm, I'm not crying for your problems, but I got my own. Don't cry for I'm me. a bit unhappy about. Um, I, I'm maintaining the booster package. Um, most people know that. And I have a lot of constants and a lot of settings. Um, I need to assign them to my page. Um, the usual way is that I assi assign my cons TypeScript constants to my setup at some point, and I'm really sick of it, <laughs> to be honest. Um, we talked about how we can tackle it. The Bootstrap package currently provides a data processor for that that just passes all constants that are given in a given namespaces um, to the template. Um, we wanted to bring something like that to core, but we are still not sure about if that's the right direction to go. When we talked about the outlook about the sites configuration, all that stuff we need there, um, we saw that could be a better way to do it in the future. So no feature for me here. So yeah, I still cool. have to assign it. Or this, is, this is basic Ernesto. So what, what makes you cry, Susie? Nothing. <laughs> So there's and nothing uh, that makes you sad. No, no at, at, at least no feature or addition or anything like that because uh, we did so much and I'm I'm just so happy with this version and maybe I just don't like being sad but honestly I I'm thinking about it while you were talking and and I have to say I I'm not sad about anything. There is a lot that could have been done but Women. that was yesterday. So let's just do it in ten. And maybe it's a sad also the wrong wording. It's just like, okay, um, we had to prioritize at some point what we need to take in. And we, as, we also need to do, needed to do some hard decisions um, about 
what we want to achieve in the future and how the code should look like and some stuff still didn't fit right in so that's the future proof label we could apply on it so we had to leave them out um, some of that was also my decision um, because um, I said okay some stuff is not in the state where we could merge it um, we, we, we really need to improve the concept beneath um, to have it for you stable and really to rely on the next years because yeah. that's what tapestry makes great what in core needs to work it has to work it needs to be re it, ne it needs to be re reliable and people re rely on that and we need to deliver that promise so that's more important than yeah some shiny stars somewhere all right so moving on in the presentation i ask my uh uh great uh director to switch over to the screen so the next big thing redirects this is something we built in, I, I skimmed through the YouTube channel earlier today and I showed a demo of that seven months ago. Uh, so this is, this is so not present to me anymore <laughs> because that's, to me it's, it's, it's standard. But, yeah, uh, but we still needed it to do no, absolutely. the page handling. Absolutely. So actually the redirects were there before we did the page handling because yeah. we need the redirects to do the page handling. <laughs> Fair enough, yeah. So um, if we take a look at the module, um, that's basically redirect handling. And what we can see is that we have quite a few uh, records um, and we have like a source path and a source destination. Um, so if we take a look at the single configuration of a single redirect, so that basically means that I can take any domain that's uh, configured, AKA sites, and that's where things start coming together. Um, I, has a, I have a source path and a target, right? And, and, and that's that. Um, we got some, some questions on the, on the channel, though, about the, uh, the HTTP header that's being sent, which is, a, by default, it's a 307 temporary redirect header. Um, any one of you care to jump in while we do a temporary redirect? Because it can't get rid of 301s easily. So so if you do a 301, you are better, very, very, very sure that you will never change that again. Because getting rid of that is really hard. So the default is simply to do a 307, which you can change and which doesn't get cached and which doesn't make you any problems that if you need the 301, you can configure the 301. Okay. I was so happy about redirects. Like, uh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> it, it, it's so <laughs> awesome because what is now easily possible is, um, I'm, I'm not working anymore in an agency because I switched to the Tapas Free Inc. Um, but what we often had was we needed to do landing pages. Yeah, and we also needed to track landing pages. But, and we wanted to track landing pages at a single point. In Google, at um, Econda, no, somewhere else. Mamoto, Pirik, Mamoto whatever. whatever. Mimito, so Mamoto, that basically I need, means that read. I need to provide tracking codes. Huh. Yeah, But the tracking codes are really hard to remember and nobody would type them in if I give, give them a single well, like summer sale or whatever. What I now can do, I can just in the, do my redirect for summer sale and prevent it to my defined landing page with all the params I need to have to track them. And it works offline in printed media. That's still a thing. QR codes, it's easy to remember. QR code, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but w what you want to have people is really short worlds and you also want to measure the success of your campaigns. Yeah. So, and we now have that we don't need any hard deployments. We had a client back then where it was really hard to get a deployment on the server. It's basically impossible. Uh, so if the client would have such um, a use case that we really need to build short worlds um, and we wanted to do the server redirects for that, um, we needed to tell the, the um, IT center eight weeks in advance that we need to do a deployment. So spontaneous language bases were not the big thing <laughs> there. So, yeah. but it's now just possible, yeah. just by configuration and without the problems. Fair enough. So moving on, 
the admin panel. Oh, can Susie explain that, please? That's the, Susie's baby. The new, the new, no, no, I, I, I want to do that. Sorry. It's, 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 you're good. Um, and I promise to get back to that because actually redirects is the, is my personal second favorite feature in core because the you know, admin panel is my favorite feature in core. Um, because this thing is so helpful. Um, so what we have now is a obviously completely new admin panel, otherwise it would just be the admin panel. Um, it's, it's completely structured and clear to understand and not, not only the, the code underneath, but also how it looks like to a user um, in the front end. So this, this could be either the editor that tries to figure out how stuff works um, or wants to simulate a point in time or a user group or show hidden records or pages for testing, but also the debugging information for the integrator and the developer alike um, is, to me, it's, it's mind blown. Um, what I love about it is that we re were able to reduce the number of uh, URL parameters by 99%, so there's still some, um, but it's no longer, I, I can just imagine, um, you know, thinking back into my agency days when I was getting URLs being sent in cl by the client, you know, like, that's an error on this page and you will be getting like that get URL string thingy. Um, that was just, that was just, ugh. And um, so this is now now Ajax based and we're really hiding all that information, um, which is pretty, pretty clever. Um, another thing is that we are showing um, non cached content items on the page. Um, we have a basically SQL analysis of SQL queries running on the current time. So we have um, and these are even grouped. Um, so they're grouped together by by the type of query by the parameter set that has been sent and it's benchmarked internally as well. This yep. is this super great. Um, and the, the, the gigantic change is, is that it's now extendable. Um, and this is what I meant by it's, it's so well structured and clear to me um, um, how, and I can imagine a ton of functionality to put in there. So um, I can't wait to get my hands on it and, and start writing some code again. Um, because I want to put like DDEF information about the current DDEF box into the admin panel because that's where that's also helpful. Um, and if we take a look at what it looks like, you need to take a look at the very, very bottom um, uh, of that module. So it's just a small bar. It, it, it's a lot slicker um, than before. Um, that's the settings tab. Um, where we can define um, preview information, simulate times and stuff. We can clear the cache of the current page or the entire front end cache, but I guess that's configurable. And depending on your user rights. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's clever. Um, the other thing is that um, we can directly jump into Type of 3's backend from there and open, open up the respective page. Um, then we have uh, page information, um, which I personally think is still helpful. Um, so we know the amount of, uh, uh, we, we know uh, whether the page has been cached um, or, or the current user group combination, all these kind of things, stuff that's normally hidden deep within the request and hard to debug, so that's all there. Um, we got a PHP I and I. Uh, or no, no, P, not PHP I and I, but PHP Info in a in a finally human readable way. Whoever built this, thank you. It's not the full one, just the important part. <laughs> um, request parameters. That's uh, uh, debug logs. Um, that's the SQL analysis we talked about, um, where we can basically see what kind of query was called, how many times. Um, so that's actually actually pretty pretty damn awesome. Um, and there's more in the queue, if I'm not mistaken. Um, <clears throat> no, no, you're not. There, there is more. <laughs> and uh, when we were talking about features that made me sad, that 
would be the only thing that was on my list that uh-huh. I didn't manage to do. <laughs> but I'm not sad about it. I just yeah. didn't manage to do it. And I have to accept that. But um, I will take my my little team that I had for the admin panel, uh, which helped me with the features and um, get them together and have a session and see if we can release an extension with some of the features that didn't make it into Type 3 version 9. So you can use the extension in version 9. And I'll also try to... As a polyfill. As, as kind of a polyfill mm-hmm. for, for features that I want to have in version 10. Like I had, for example, the um, display of, of signals available on the page pending. And uh, I have a quite ugly but working solution for displaying the hooks on the page, stuff like that. So um, there's more to come. But but uh, so basically, I could see all the all the available hooks yeah. plus the used ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So that's that's and the ugly pretty. part is the available ones because that's that's there is no registry weird. or something. <laughs> so big, yeah. But if I remember, we also did a change, which I ask in favor of you and you just said okay i can't do that now i will not do that and we're actually now also storing the complete request so we can record it later we're currently not using it but if you look closely maybe you can build something with it like separate pages separate pages or standalone admin panel without front and beneath (laughs) or a history of requests or a history of requests there's uh, many things <laughs> that could so happen. Much, yeah, so so much for the outlook. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jörg, is there uh, is there any anything on the question front? By the way, where are you located right now? Um, I'm speaking to you from Chicago, Illinois, right now. If I'm correct, I don't know. I'm kind of lost here and pretty jet lagged. But let's get to the question real quick. So we have a question coming through via YouTube by Marcus Bachmann. Is it possible to extend the admin panel through extensions? Is it possible to extend the admin panel through extensions? Yes. 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 Absolutely. Of course. It is Quick uh, one. Next one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Simple question. I love those, by the way. Yes. There's Marcus. documentation for that. Even better. Yep. <laughs> so perfect. Got another one. Yeah, I do actually. Our good friend Matthias Bortlesniak asks via Twitter, what is the feature in version 9 LTS that will help Type 3 spread to new clients worldwide the most? And how is Type 3 doing international today versus two years ago? That's multiple questions, right? He tries to cheat us. I also think so. <laughs> Matthias, you're totally... Uh, totally allowed to send multiple single questions. It's okay. Um, so, <laughs> what, what separated if, tweets. I, 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 I got to work for that one. What, what is the, the feature in 9 LTS that will help, that will most help Table 3 spread to new clients worldwide? From my perspective, out, it is site handling. Absolutely. That helps you up, really ramp up your page really quickly uh, with also the extensions we did for, for multi-language menus that now can be completely be auto-generated with all the information you really need to do in combination with the new SEO stuff where Yoast and... Spoilers! Well, maybe I know I'm not talking about SEO yet, there is but no maybe there is something about search engines <laughs> uh, we will also talk about. Uh, I think that com- that's, that's a combination of the multiple things that are really nicely working together um, that are m- making it really really fast to spin up stuff oh, yeah. get stuff really more quickly done you need to do a, a lot less working around stuff that's not so perfect it just works right yeah. out of the box so that's and if you use the the the, the proper bootstrapping mechanisms underneath that for your site packages for example you get best in class web performance yeah and that, that's not what we were saying that's what google says so you don't have to trust us trust them um, so the second question is how is Type 3 doing internationally today versus two, year, uh, two years ago? Um, who of the developers wants to answer that? I Let's thought so. That's your part of question. <laughs> That's marketing, um, right? So we are all. It's well, we have we we, we we were having a a, uh, a strategic meeting just the other week, um, 
and uh, compared some KPIs and Typo 3 is currently growing at, uh, at a three digit rate in uh, outside of the duck region. Um, and this is what we consider one of our biggest successes right now is that we can extend Typo 3 um, outside the duck region. Um, and uh, I don't know if anyone from the, I do know there's a release party in Pakistan, which I don't know, it's like 1 a.m. or even 2 a.m. in the morning right now. Um, so if you're looking at us, <laughs> hey guys, um, I'm pretty sure that the, 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 the wild, wildman at, at Nitsan uh, will most likely be awake as well. So shout <laughs> out to you. Um, and um, I think that Michael Shams from, from Australia actually missed the release day because we released after noon. So for him, it's October 3rd. Um, <laughs> Yet, and I'm pretty sure that there's a couple of people uh, over in the in the U.S. and South America and, and Canada um, who might watch this during lunch, hopefully. <laughs> so um, I think we're, we're 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 doing pretty good. There's there's still a lot of things to do, um, but yeah, I think we're doing good. So that would be my take on things. So I'll say we'll jump onwards. Oh, it's me again. One more question before we go on to a short little break because I have to, uh, you know, catch another plane to a different place entirely. So, Xavier Pesiguris, I hope I pronounced that name correctly, I'm not sure. Um, regarding Slug, is it possible to copy-paste some front-end URL and directly open the corresponding page in the back-end? No, um, it's not possible to just copy paste some URL from the front end and directly open it in the back end because honestly, I wouldn't know where to paste it. Um, but I, but the admin panel has a button which will send you directly to that page. So no copying, no pasting involved. <laughs> it's all there with a click of a button. But that button is already available for a while. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's so. Okay. So, um, that here's here's the thing. I mean, we, we don't, we, we, except he is a close friend. Yeah. Um, sure. <laughs> um, I'm. We need to talk. Hit us up. No, but the 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 uh, technically, I don't see a problem at all. What, what whatsoever resolving the URL is no different. It's completely decoupled from the front end, anyways. I, I'm not actually sure I got the question. So what what he wants to do is that you're in the browser, yeah, um, and you have an amazingly incredible URL with page handling yeah. and 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 base yeah. language prefix and yeah. route and, and, and now I copied that. N and right now you have it in the clipboard. Yeah, and now I do what? Now you paste it. Yeah, well, but that, that's the, I'm I'm, mis I'm maybe I'm I'm just missing the use. Ca I'm trying to figure out where I paste it. The, 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 See, that, that's what I meant initially. Um, I don't know where to paste it I in mean, the back end. What, I mean, what we could do is, is, is what we, we could just have like a key command. So you, you open up your back end and you type command space and like a huge search bar pops up. You could just use the search bar on the top right then. For example. Yeah, but we wanted to have a big search already. Ah, yeah. so so we want to have a big search right. now. Yeah. But, but because bigger better. Exactly, but but that no more features. Ah, oh, okay. But didn't make it. Too bad. You you're sad about that? No. Okay. <laughs> um, no, but but that's the point. So so you paste it somewhere in the back end, and the back end will immediately open up that page. That sounds like like, like a nice feature. Xavier, could you just report that as a feature request? So. You don't have to look into the iPad. <laughs> he can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to look somewhere. No, that works. That works. Okay, so um, I'd say we move on with the presentation, um, or just just move through those things. So our director, bam. I wasn't sparring that far. <laughs> what? <laughs> 
I wasn't spoiling that far. I know, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can't just go the SEO stuff is our favorite thing, and nobody okay. knows about okay. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. So, so we did quite a quite a few things in terms of SEO, and that's mainly, I think, Richard Hazes, uh, Richard Hazes. Uh, yeah. I'm probably <laughs> pronouncing it wrong, but you know, I mean well. Um, we love you. Yeah, <laughs> we do, <laughs> honestly. Um, uh, uh, th that's based on his work. So what we now have is in the page properties, we have a dedicated SEO tab, um, which, uh, which has robot instructions uh, like index this page or follow this page. There's, there's open graph information, Twitter cards, open graph tags, etc. Um, built in right within the system. So you no, no longer need like, like third party uh, extensions to take care of those things. Um, so the huge things is that we have a proper page title API, which is uh, you're not on camera. Yeah. But I, I, I love how you love it. Um, we can create XML uh, uh, site maps per site and language automatically, which is again mind blown. Um, we have uh, automatical canonical links that are being generated so extremely helpful if you're if you're reusing uh, content someplace else um, we have href lang tags in multilingual sites which is pretty pretty awesome um, and that sounds like a ton of things to configure which it's not um, we have the full-blown SEO-related meta tag set um, that's within type of 3 spec and that's what we just saw um, with Twitter cards and open graph tags and blah, 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 and image handling and the editor just knows what to do. So this is actually pretty, pretty clever. And this is all rendered in the front end by default. So yeah. yep. it, just, it just poof, magic. Now I can do SEO, finally. That's that's pretty decent. So that's the, that's the uh, the page title API and 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 other things that we did. So I mean the the page title API um, to circle back to that that finally allows us to properly access the page title in our site package and be like the last uh, instance. Uh, well, everyone who has ever built an extension needs at some point to set the page title. That was. You you couldn't be sure ever sure every time that it worked because you needed to do set multiple values to multiple values uh, multiple it was settings weird. to mul yes it was a bit weird so now we have a clear API you have a clear call no hacking no additional header data in TypeScript what you're wrapping around you just call the API sets a title done yeah that makes sense so yet same another thing, tags. and this is, and, and we have the same for meta tag APIs so, uh, or, or for meta tags. So r running meta tags in Table Three works, but it's also weird or used to be weird. So um, we basically now have Open Graph out of the box. That's what we what we just saw. This is part of Table Three's core. Um, but if you need different meta tags you can use uh, custom meta tag managers or register your own meta tag manager in the meta tag manager <laughs> registry <laughs> oh, that's great this is this is the task for everyone on youtube um finish the release party get wasted and say that five times quick and then just tweet that to us um so um we can then add meta tags both via TypeScript and or PHP. And these are, and, and we can do stuff like, we can add a property, we can remove a property, um, we can remove all properties that have been set before our code, or our, our code bypasses that, that, that segment. Um, and this is, this is uh, actually pretty pretty smart because now we have we have full control because all meta tags have are now registered into containers, um, which we can then access. So Benji's happy. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was his idea. He made me build it, and then I failed, and then Richard Hazel built it, who obviously did not fail and succeeded. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> and that's, that's again what makes me sad. Um, <laughs> so um, this is this is actually pretty clever. So we can we, we now have full access over all meta tags uh, that we can set. And this is from 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 what I have seen. This is best in class. Um, yeah. It's 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 so detailed. It takes uh, it it takes care of so many nitty gritty details or how I would call it broken standards like Open Graph, um, especially like if you want to run m multiple images with multiple image sizes. This is like the weirdest standard pseudo standard that I've ever seen. So that's really really odd. Yep, but I'm I'm happy with that as well. That makes things so much easier. So yeah, I'm just thinking about implementing new features. So I'll, I'll let you do stuff, the stuff, mm -hmm. and then you fail, and then Richard comes around and corrects it. Mm -hmm. That sounds, sounds good. Perfect. <laughs> so in, 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 in the first versions of the of, 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 uh, Type of 310, I will start <laughs> building all the things, <laughs> fail horribly, um, then cry myself to sleep, um, and everybody else will fix it. That sounds very feasible. Um, so if we move on, into into also something which is so freaking amazing yet elegant um, it's the extension scanner and we demoed that on the channel as well so what it actually does that it finds breaking changes and deprecations in your extension source code that you have and this this circles back to the question by by Torsten earlier um, how hard the migration will be, this thing is amazing. Um, and what's even better is that it's now also available um, independently of Typo 3's core. So I can basically run that on command line um, and it will find all the deprecations and everything I need to do. And it's, if, if I would be a business person, <laughs> I, would, I, I would love to have... Um, my developers put an an estimation on a certain change and then we could just run that across the entire site's code base and then we would get like some realistic estimation from that because if we know fixing this takes an hour let's just say an hour because it's two method calls being switched. it's it's not frank doing all the work I know, everywhere i know i know but I st I'll, I'll still stick to the to frank's hour that's uh, <laughs> um <laughs> And it happened to be 30 times, I can now allocate 30 hours of work on that. That would be... Yeah, I'm too business, I guess. Yeah, th that's too business because <laughs> now I'm, I have the development part and, and say you can't <laughs> calculate it that easily. And of course. <laughs> no, you can't. And uh, the extension scanner, of course, doesn't find everything there is to find because if we deprecate a method like, let's, let's call it init, and uh, it's not statically called, then we will find weak matches for every init call in every class in existence, basically. We, we do some stuff to make it a bit stronger in the matching, but basically we cannot determine realistically how many of these init calls are deprecated. So but we do have strong matches. We, we have strong matches for some things, but not for everything. And exactly. there's still some things that we can't match at all. So Fair if, if uh, the front end output changes or... Um, Stuff like that breaks. Then, did the, I'm I'm just doing the developer thing here. No? I know. But so so maybe we have managers watching, and and yeah. then they go to their developers, and then they want. How long does it take? You can just calculate that. No, no, said no, so. no, 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 no. Here's the thing. You need to listen. <laughs> I said, it would be possible to, dot dot dot. I didn't say it is possible so it's, you can build this or you could build this i have no clue how because i will obviously <laughs> fail um <laughs> so that, we agree on that yeah awesome that's like the theme of the evening matthias fails um in development okay um but the the um onwards the really cool thing is that um there's uh extension scanner configurations for version 7 and 8 as well um which are provided by uh us <laughs> um, <laughs> didn't you know? <laughs> uh, to be honest, no, I didn't. <laughs> I, I asked you like like one and a half year ago if you could could uh, publish do that and and publish that and give it to Michiel who wanted to build the standalone tool and you said do whatever you want and basically no, I was just like I tried and failed. <laughs> <laughs> See? 
so, so we did <laughs> that and yeah. Michiel built the tool and yeah, the, the Oli extracted it from the core and now we have this cool solution. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. So if we take a look at that, so this is this is this is not command line whatsoever. It's it's what that's what's built in core. Yeah. So what you can basically do, and this is where Torsten needs to uh, to listen up, um, is basically you take your current Type of Three installation that you have, which is a version eight, of course, um, and uh, then you put like a version nine core on top of it, and then run that thing from the from the maintenance module, um, and then you can at least get like an idea what you what you will be messing with right yeah so but this is... don't there is no need to get it green always i've just yeah, seen right. the booster packet <laughs> scan of course and you have already seen a lot of weak matches also a strong match that's a deprecated which i know but i, I need to keep it on as long as i want to support eight and nine fair enough so i have to live with the deprecation so it's Orange is is maybe okay. If you if you got a red, that's a problem. Yeah, <laughs> probably. You're fucked. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Then it doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, the other cool thing is that with, with every with every match, everything we find, there's a direct link to the documentation right at your fingertips. Um, and this is this is at least for me this is huge, um, because it's it you know it's we we get so so much feedback in terms of you know like five years ago before we started this entire new release cycle idea people were complaining there's no documentation nowadays people are complaining there's too much documentation i couldn't find stuff um which honestly that's that's the hit i take right i i I'd rather have too much documentation than no documentation um, and I think this is a great example of how we can make things easier um, because we now basically point the point the stuff into um, that basically point their noses directly at the at the uh, at the issues at hand and that should solve like a lot of problems so if we move on with that, we have a lot of new features, um, but we don't want to spend too much time on that. And we got like a couple more questions, and then I think we'll let everybody have a good time at the party. But we still got slides. I know, I know. <laughs> so first up, X-based translation is now consistent with how TypeScript used to work. Woo freaking who? Who did that? <laughs> Which is uh, basically a bug fix by, I, I think, mainly Timek and Markus. And uh, if I remember correctly, lots of other people were involved in that change. And I think it was uh, something about 100 in patch sets and it was finished shortly before the release. And they were wor working on that for a year or something. So there was really a lot of stuff to do there. And mainly, um, even if it's a bug fix, it's something a lot of people are, were waiting for because now you can rely on type 3 behaving consistently whether you're using xbase or whether you configured your language settings via typoscript so no more weird workarounds that you need to implement yourself but if you currently rely on these bugs being there you can use a feature toggle and uh, disable or enable that behavior so you get it uh, without a backwards compatibility break but you have to switch at the latest with version 10. So see that you get your stuff cleaned up in version 9. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. So that's the feature toggle stuff. Yep. Right? So we can basically see how um, th that's where the new experimental stuff kicks in um, and the, the big changes that we had. We had, we had slight problems with the, with the screen, so we're a bit out of out of tune, but uh, we'll get back into that pretty, pretty fast. Um, another cool thing is the entire admin tools section. So the former install tool has now been broken down into four dedicated segments or modules or navigational items so that you can focus on. And, and to be honest, I mean, I'm, I'm doing type of three for 
like 17 years now and I always had my install tool. I loved my install tool. I, I truly did. Um, but f at least for me, it got hard to find stuff. This is, this is why I started uh, 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 helping out rewriting things and didn't fail. Huh? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, 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 doing those things. Um, but right now I have to admit that, that if I, if I search for things in the new admin tools uh, 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 section, what I basically do is I just think, okay, what do I want to do now? Do I want to tweak settings or do I want to do maintenance? And I find all the stuff at the right place. So it takes a little bit getting used to. Like um, we had the question earlier today on Slack, like, okay, wh wh where's the language module? Right? Because there's no more language module. Because that's maintenance. So, as you can see in the screen in the lower right hand corner, you now manage the language packs in the maintenance module, um, which totally makes sense. Um, and, and the, I mean, the, the, the language manager is, is, is uh, yet a cool thing that we definitely need to demo because it's, it's, it's super awesome. So, uh, Lolly did like an amazing job doing that. Um, yeah, but later. Not now. <laughs> totally not now. <laughs> so um, if we move on to the uh, uh, to, to the next uh, uh, pretty cool feature, I mean, this is I think this is your your favorite change or your second favorite change. This is actually my favorite change. Um, Go for it. We had a lot of talk about how the buttons in the backend should behave. So I know Matthias and me we spent a lot of holidays together, um, and we worked on that. On our first trip to Mallorca, this is, and it this was is, rainy. Just, 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 just let that sink in for a second. Like we spend a lot of holidays together working on Typo 3's core. Yeah, that's better than what we're doing. <laughs> and we're glad that our wives yeah. know each other very good, so they can do whatever they want, and we can code. Um, and I can fail. Yeah, <laughs> um, we worked on the first implementation of the um, so-called. Um, split buttons. Um, to, the idea was to really reduce the amount of buttons shown to the editor to make it more easy um, to manage all the data for, for newcomers because we simply don't have any place to do the labels because we had buttons like save and mark translation as done. So My favorite one. <laughs> Yeah, that was one of three hidden save buttons we, we, we still had. Save and, and delete. Save and delete was also a highly requested feature. I, I, it pops up every time again. Um, and we needed to find a solution for that. Um, and we thought, okay, we started grouping actions. Uh, that was the, the save button you know from version 8, where you can put the drop down and uh, select all the versions that are available. Um, but when we implemented that, we knew we need to do better. We had some ideas. I liked it. Yeah, you liked it. <laughs> I got all the shit stomped for that. So. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, <laughs> we, we knew we, we could, uh, could improve. Um, at this point, we, um, I think we also had a lot of talking about on our discussions platform. Um, and Somewhere out of France, Rachel Foucault popped up. Foucault. Foucault. Uh, and I most likely pronounced that wrong. Rachel, I, I'm so, Rachel, so, we'll, so sorry. Yeah, but um, there's no problem. We'll meet on Friday. We'll, yeah, uh, we'll have a glass of wine and figure it out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so, um, Rachel also thought it was necessary to do that stuff, and we sat together and um, we worked out that new concept. Um, that's now made it to the core. Um, that's basically removing all other save buttons because we... Uh, all of them. All of them. <laughs> all of we them. only got one save button left. Um, everything else is gone because... But it's a smart save button. <laughs> yeah, our buttons got, got a lot smarter. Um, they now, now basically know the state yeah. of the buttons itself. Yeah. So, so that if, means if if Steph could just switch us to the screen, we can actually show. Yeah, perfect. That's what we need to yeah. see. Um, if you, for example, um, 
just press the close button. So uh, let me step back. So we're talking about the top safe thing. Yeah, right? actually. So yeah. So if you can, you now can see we got save, uh, close, save, view, new, duplicate, and delete. Because that's what we think is everything you need. Also, you need to enable duplicate. Yeah. Um, but this is this is cool as well. Yeah. But stick to the save button. For, stick to the save side. button for the moment. Um, if you now do changes and people complain, okay, that's too hard to um, to find the save and close button. They need it. They can't do anything in the lives without a, a dedicated save and close button. So okay, we said, okay, we're, where's the problem? Um, because at some points, people were just used to pressing save and close, even they didn't change anything. Yeah. Yeah. They just wanted to close that record. Uh, to get the open documents, you know, from the back end, um, just go away. Or they just wanted, that's their way to, to, to do the closing stuff. So we just said, okay, when you want to close a document and you have unsafe changes, we we actually need to inform you. Yeah. Yeah. Because Which is super elegant, super simple, super clever. Yeah. That, that probably you will only get if you have unsafe changes. If you did not change anything at the record, the record will just close immediately. But if you have unsafe changes, the system really doesn't know how to proceed. So should right. it discard the date, the changes you made? Did you made it by accident? Um, like did a misclick. You, did you yeah. misclick, for example? Or do you really want to just save and close? Huh? So now all buttons got that intelligence implemented that also goes for the view button and the new button and the duplicate button um i think i think not for the delete button it will just delete the record so fair enough that's what you want to do it will ask whether you want to delete the record yeah okay it will ask <laughs> you if you want to delete the record or not um but we're trying to help the user better understand what he's doing um without just um distracting him too much by avoiding every kind of models or confirmations necessary yeah. if not required which is actually exactly like every piece of software i use work yeah except for the consumer grade apple which automatically saves everything unless i'm offline and then my data is lost but it doesn't close everything automatically i hope it does weird things <laughs> okay. but that's that's for another video so yeah that's um, so that's one of my really favorite features, because um, I think um, the solution implemented is really smart now, and we can rely on. Um, it and we really can also save to, in the future. Yes, that's why I don't want to. We, do we mixing the outlook now? No, no, because no. I was just I'm, I'm just throwing random yeah, things in because there we could also say okay, we don't need the save button anymore, and on the first. I think it was three know, years know, ago when we looked at the solution, where we yeah. were talked, okay, no problem, we got stop the... Stop it, stop, stop. It, we're, okay. we're just dropping rumors we're not and we're out of saving seeing for where now. that takes us. Um, yeah, so um, more cool stuff that we have is we have a debug mode for forms, which is super helpful because the ammo tends to get huge. Um, so that was, that was requested. We got Symphony Expression Language, which is also a pretty, pretty huge helpful change um and this this finally makes the makes condition syntax equal in across type three score yeah it's not fully implemented but there's a, what's it's, it, it's like it, it, hts config i guess and then now it's typescript conditions at the moment and variants for form where you can use symphony expression language but for example you cannot use it yet in i think display conditions so uh, basically what we wanted to achieve was... So display conditions, um, just, just to fill up on that, that's when you want to show a form, a form field in the backend based on certain conditions. Yeah. yeah. So, so what we wanted to do is to use it everywhere where conditions are used, but we didn't manage a full implementation for that, so we did... Does that the make you sad? No, it doesn't <laughs> make me sad. It still doesn't make... I'm not sad. Um, but we still managed, I think, the, the two biggest parts, um, the TypeScript conditions and the form framework. Yeah. So I like it. Yeah, that's actually pretty cool. So we got form frame, f f framework, framework. <laughs> yeah, fr framework variants. 
um, which basically means that we have, we have multiple variants of, of forms being rendered. And, and you can have conditions in there yeah. and say, okay, you have that field in that language or when there's Tuesday. Fair enough. Um, the TypeScript conditions, so this is basically that Symfony expression language is for form framework variants yeah. and TypeScript conditions. Yeah. That's what you mentioned earlier. Um, so we got an SVG-based tree. So XJS finally <laughs> left us. died. Left us. Don't, don't talk about dying. Dying is sad. It just left. It's on holiday. Like, like things leaving is a happy thing. Yeah. Uh, if if you leave, that's a happy leaving. thing. It I mean, it's just... <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> you put <pulled> off me. <laughs> okay, you folks, it. this is going to be a very <laughs> short broadcast. Um, no, but, but seriously, so the, the, the SVG thing is also huge um, because it, it, it works uh, like a charm. It's fast. Um, it, it renders fast on mobile devices, so this is actually pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Um, yet another huge thing is the system maintainers, um, which will remove um, the four, no, the five modules and admin tools uh, from the view of the current user just to clean up the backend. Even if you're an admin user, it just declutters your view. Yeah. Um, which is super helpful, especially if you start deploying things automatically and there is nothing to configure um, because this is all done on deployment level um, a step before. Then uh, Type 3 runs on CQ Lite, which is also, and it's faster than I expected it to be. It's actually nearly as fast as MySQL. Yeah, so so if, if you're running a small a, a small Type 3 website, you don't even need like like uh, the MySQL uh, thing in, in, in the web server. Or if you're installing uh, 100 type of 3s a day for testing things. Who would do that? I, I don't know, like, maybe maybe ask somebody <laughs> shortly <laughs> before a release. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that definitely makes sense. Um, if we move on, we got um, quite a few more things. So we the restriction containers um, that we added in version 8 for, for Doctrine um, are now extendable, which is super helpful if you want to do stuff like A-B testing, etc. And, and that's actually a pretty underrated feature because you could uh, Im implement uh, personalization with that. That's spoilers! Um, Again! Then what I love is mandatory restrictions. So restrictions that are being applied even if you tell Typo 3 to remove all restrictions. So these these are, st or we could, should have called them sticky restrictions or whatever, um, which is super important in terms of data privacy. So it, this is about GDPR compliancy that you can put um, at a later point, extend the standard restriction container with a mandatory extension. And then other third party extensions would still get that mandatory restriction, even if they would say, or, or code, remove all restrictions from doctrine. This is this is just as elegant, as clever, as helpful. <laughs> this is awesome. Um, yeah, we got validation messages in the form framework as well. It's also a hugely requested feature. Um, then we have um, the conditions for form fields. This is circling a bit. Um, we got finally support for bcrypt and, uh, bcrypt and argon 2i, um, which is password encryption hashing, hashing algorithms. Um, and I think Argon2i or Bcrypt, uh, either one of those is, is handled like best in the industry, something along those lines. Um, the right one. I think so, Argon2i is the new one. Um, so go ask your hostess to give you access to Argon2i. Um, you can change to that actually uh, transparently, right? I, I tested that, you can, you can just set the encryption to Argon2i um, and uh, the next time the users log in, they get like the, the stronger yep. password match. So it's actually pretty clever. Um, yeah, we got the env generic environment class, so we no longer need to call general utility get in. <laughs> <and> yes. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is one of my favorites. Um, and uh, yeah, as we, as we discussed earlier, we get quite a few uh, privacy and security features. So, um, Let's see where Jörg is at, and we maybe have time for a couple of questions. Sir. 
I already told you I don't want to buy the pair of speakers, okay? So I have to... I have, really have, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, we actually have a few questions. One's from one of our good buddies, Sanjay from India. Just curious to know, which feature will you guys love and plan to develop in Type 3 version 10? Which feature would we love and plan to develop? That's a that's a sneaky question. That's tricky. We love to do a lot of things. The planning, though, <laughs> um, I do know that we have we're doing quite some progress on the data persistence front. Um, that's that's moving forward. Um, but again, this is this is this is very rough ideas because I definitely won't be talking to Benny Mark for the next two weeks, so that he just learns to sh switch off. Um, and after that, we will most likely meet in Berlin for a type of recon. And after that, um, you're on holiday. Yep. Yeah. Um, so you do know what holiday means. Um, and you invited us to come and work, yeah. I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> see. And the um, no, but but this is the thing. So so we're 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 looking in in, in a couple of directions right now. So um, the the data persistence is one thing. Um, social marketing hubbing, <laughs> whatever we want to call that, that's yet another thing. Um, dashboards on our radar. The front end editing is something a lot of people request. Um, so these are these are basically the, the things that we explore right now. Um, the entire signal slot thingy and, and hook replacement that's that's a huge thing I would love to see in core um, just to, to ease up things. Um, AMP support uh, might be a huge thing. Maybe somebody comes up and includes some I don't know something that helps marketers advertise stuff. So this is the direction I would love to like Mautic or <laughs> Mautic or <laughs> Bing ads or whatever. I don't care. So you know, something along those lines um, to mm -hmm. to uh, to continue on, on down that path. Um, the sites module is definitely something. And for me, content elements, rendering, splitting, single responsibility, um, decouple it, make it better usable, reduce the amount of work that's necessary to do yeah. content elements properly. I mean, arguably, Type 3 is feature complete. Yeah. There's just things not so cool to use. It's a way why my biggest feature I would want, like to work on is not a feature. I'd like to clean up a lot of things. Sim simply because you can do a lot and, and everything's mostly working fine but a lot of places there's there's still some dust gathering in in some classes and uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I, I mean th there's a lot of things that simply need, need streamlining and and clean up and more tests to make it more stable and um i don't know i i like clean up that sounds strange fair enough let's not yeah. continue that way yeah. <laughs> I think we have time for another one. Jörg, you're still with us. Yeah, sure, of course. Um, our good friend Tom Warwick from Wales has, a, has the following question. What's the long-term plan for indexed search? Namely, for small sites that don't require something as big as solar. That's an easy one. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just pretty sure that Tom won't like my answer. Um, I, I don't see a problem with indexed search. Huh. Uh, indexed search, <laughs> indexed search, search, <laughs> indexed search just scales badly. Um, so the bigger your site is, scaling gets worse and slow. And if I take a look at the question, so what's the long term plan for indexed search, namely for smaller sites? You're good. I mean, maybe we could do the cleanup stuff there. Susie will clean that up for you. I, I said I we. Can, I, I he start, can fail. I, exactly. I start cleaning it up. I will fail. Susie will fix it. 
No, but 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 seriously, I mean the 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 general principle um, under which index search works is okay-ish, um, and uh, I mean the, the, the how the data is being stored. That's that's fine and well. But yep. I don't I don't I personally I don't see much room to improve. Um, the SQL queries though, yeah, that, those could use some serious love. Um, but in general, that's, I mean, it's a refactoring thing. I mean, it, again, it does what it does. I would, it could improve a bit. I would maybe answer the question in a different way. I, I, Do so. I think we will always need a solution for search for smaller sites that uh, cannot install a standalone search server like Solar or Elasticsearch or whatever. So some kind of small search will always be part of, or at least from, from in my opinion, should always be part of Type 3. So, whether it's called index search, I don't know. But there will be some kind of solution. Yep. So, I would conclude the presentation part. Sure, go yeah. ahead. So, if our director could bring Ooh. back the new stuff. So, that's basically... Um, the new URL on the new typeo3.org. I mean, this is also something we could talk about because back at the last LTS release, we didn't have a new typeo3.org, so yeah. kudos to the team for finally getting that job done. Um, and uh, the, um, that's the new part where you can basically uh, jump in to contribute. Um, and the other cool stuff is, and that's the URLs that you most likely will see in the presentation on location as well. So you can check out the What's New slides. These are available, I think, in nine languages or 19. I'm not entirely sure. I'm, I'm not sure if they are available for nine LTS yet. I'm pretty in sure. In all languages? I'm, I don't, that, that's what I meant. I so, do know so the English ones are there and a couple more languages. Yeah. So that should definitely work. And if you want to play a game, you can guess my favorite feature from the What's New slides because we didn't talk about my favorite feature at all. So it's still hidden in the What's New slides. Okay, so here's the thing. We, wh what we will do, if you, you, just, you just leave comments under this video. If you can guess Susie's favorite feature, you will get... What do we do? Surprise. No, great idea. We have this super nice... Type of three sign. Type of three switch. metal signs right here. If you can guess Susie's favorites feature, um, we will send you one. So that that no, don't break it. Ah, oh, come <laughs> on. <laughs> so okay, next time Benny will pre uh, present all the stuff. So um, <laughs> <laughs> perfect. All right, so um, we kind of kept a proper time, I think. So um, we wish everyone uh, a great time with the new Type 3 release. Um, we wish everyone a lot of fun at the release parties. Um, we are definitely going to have a glass of water now. Um, I would like to say thanks for Susie for still being with us after being awake so long and still looking amazing. Um, I would like to say uh, yeah, thank I'm not you. looking amazing, but <laughs> yeah, I'm still here. But <laughs> you were, you were, uh, uh, <laughs> you, you were tweeting at like 5 a.m. this morning. Three. Whatever. It's just, that works. All right. So um, thank you very much. Have a lot of fun with the new release. Test, test, test. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, dear Type 3 community, thank you for joining us tonight and sticking with us. And uh, bye. Taxi!